come on. It's a bit small in here, isn't it? Not much room for anything. I think when I said be me and I think somebody's got the wrong idea. Well, so I'm stuck here. Welcome to my review of the Atari Lynx. More specifically, the Atari Lynx 2, because that's the model I have. Ah, that's better. Thank you all very much for getting me up to there. I was getting a bit tight in there. Now, the Atari Lynx, the original one, was first released in September of 1989, and it does hold a few firsts for the handheld gaming consoles. This was the first ever colour LCD uh, handheld console. This was also the first console to have an ambidextrous layout, which means you can do this and still play it, which means if you're left-handed, you can still play fine. Great, eh? This was also the first handheld console to have hardware support for sprite zooming and distortion, which put it way beyond its competitors at the time. The system also had a link, which originally was going to be infrared, but uh, later it was changed to a cable design. And what this enabled to occur was for up to 17 players to be linked to each other on the consoles, obviously. Mm. But this, most games only linked up to 8, so this feature was never fully, uh, fully appreciated. One interesting point to note about the system is originally they were actually going to put the cartridges onto tape, well the games onto tape, and you'd have to load them on off, obviously, from a tape player. Now, is it just me, or was that not really a very portable solution? But luckily, they saw sense and they changed the games to uh, cartridge based instead. Much better if you ask me. Now, despite the uh, system having, in the end, two versions, of which this one is number two, it did, it was actually classed as a flop. It did sell two to, between two to five million uh, handhelds. It was quite successful here in the UK and in Europe, but in America, uh, it did not survive much at all. Now, the reasons for that, we're going to have a look at that shortly. But first of all, let's go and have a look at one of the consoles, the Atari Lynx 2 itself. Okay, here it is, this is the Atari Lynx 2 itself, and as you can see, it's a sizeable beast. This is it compared to my hand, probably not the best analogy, but here is a Game Boy uh, Pocket. And you can see uh, the size here compared to that. It is quite large, you can see the thickness there. But, in its defence, <coughs> here's the Game Gear, which was its competitor, and they are actually a similar size. So it's not that bad. The good thing about its size is it means it's extremely comfortable to use. You don't feel cramped like you do on the, uh, the Game Boy when you're using this. So, let's have a look at the system. Right, in the middle here you've got your screen obviously, which uh, compared to the Game Gear is a great screen. This one still works perfectly. Game Gears have a lot of problems, but that's for another video. On the left here we got your on button, uh, the off button and the backlight button. I'm going to explain more about the backlight in a moment because that is a commonly misunderstood uh, part of the system. On the right you've got various option buttons. There's a pause button in the middle, uh, option one button and option two. I'll show you how they work in a moment. And here you have two buttons. This is for the ambidextrous feature of the console. Bottom, you've got the battery bay, which uh, can take six to blaze, which is one of the problems with this system. On the top, you've got volume headphones, which on the two is in stereo, on the original, it says mono. The comlinks, which allows you to connect up to 17 people the power socket and the brightness. The back, nothing special, you've got rubber grips which the original one did not have. Uh, little clips there for a wrist strap so you don't drop it. And the cartridge, <coughs> oh excuse me, the cartridge which goes nicely in here. 
on the original system uh, the cartridge went in a door on the side here and the original cartridges were flat so it was extremely difficult to get them out these will need to change to these uh, rounded ones you see the rounded edge there um, which made it much better but on the number two they got rid of the trap door completely and put it on the back so it's very easy in on the floor and out <laughs> right what we'll do we'll switch her on have a look at the running and show you some of these features so because she does eat a fair amount of juice I'm gonna run on the mains uh, good tip with these things with these power adapters when not in use I, I am I quite often lose these what I've started to do is just leave them in the console when it's not in use then you don't lose it now let's plug her in match up the uh, match up the power there and switch around. We've got a stun runner in, which I think shows the graphics on this quite nicely. Here we go. Would help if I turn the contrast up. There we go. And a bit of volume. Now it is very difficult to see these on a modern camera, but you'll have to take my word for it. The screen works perfectly. And it's rather nice. Now, first thing I'm going to show you with this is the the backlight feature, which is misunderstood. Most people say, "Oh, the backlight feature, you know, you switch on for backlight and it saves your power, but you can't see the game." What point? What use is that? Well, that's not the point of the backlight. The point of the backlight is to put the system on pause, then switch the backlight off. So, if you're running on batteries, that saves loads of power. It's not for use while you're playing, it's for use while it's, it's switched off. Which a lot of people don't seem to know. The other great feature of this system, put it back on pause, well, here we go, is the ambidextrous feature. So, here it is, no way up, if I press this button and this button together, see the screens flip the other way up. Meaning, if you're left handed, you can still play it. How great is that? Now, I'm not going to show you any videos running, any games running, because that'll make the video horrendously long. And I have some videos at the end to show you gameplay. So, uh, that is a look at the system itself. So, that's a look at the hardware. Now, let's have a look at why this thing failed. Looking at the games for this as I showed you prior, you'd have thought this would have shifted off the shelves hugely, and been hugely successful. But this was not the case. See, one of the reasons for this was at the same time Nintendo released the Game Boy, which was a black and white console. You, know, you would have thought, well, compared to the Lynx, that's never going to sell with that out there. But it did have its advantages over the, uh, the Lynx, which uh, ultimately meant it won the competition. The first reason, and it's not a small thing, in fact, it's quite a large thing, is the sheer size of the console. Apparently, when uh, Atari developed it, they did customer workshops where they asked people what they thought they would like. And the feedback came back that you know, the larger the console, the more the people felt they were getting for the money. So they decided to do a large footprint for the console. This put people off because it was too big. Whereas you had the Game Boy, which would just about go in your pocket. This thing most definitely would not. Second point is price. Whereas the Game Boy was selling for about $99, this thing was selling for $200, which meant it was priced out of a lot of people's pockets. And the third thing, which uh, was a big factor for a lot of people, is battery life. Battery life on this in the 90s, with a 90s battery, you're talking about four to five hours gameplay. Whereas the Game Boy could reach eight or nine hours of gameplay. So it got to be, unless you were running it on the mains, which sort of wasn't the point of a portable system, then uh, this used a hell of a lot of batteries and turned out to be rather expensive to run, which put a lot of people off. Another factor, of course, with this being Atari, was Atari's marketing department. They failed to get a huge supply of these into the shops before Christmas. So whereas the Game Gear 
which I'll mention in a moment, and the Game Boy was selling in truckloads, they were very few of these around, so people just went with the competition. They couldn't wait, and they just went with the competition, which ruined its chances from the off. The last factor, of course, was the Game Gear. It was very similar to the Atari Lynx in size and battery consumption, although the screen was inferior, I have to say. So, should you buy one of these today? Well, personally, I'd say go for it. They are a great console with the graphics that are far more advanced than the Game Gear had. For graphics far more advanced than anything at the time. It was only really till the Game Boy Advance that other consoles caught up with this system. So yes, it has great games and now it's available cheap. I only paid about £13 for that. That's, what, well, $20 for this system unboxed. And it's great. I love it. There's great games. There's loads of arcade games. Uh, a good hint for it though. Run it off the mains. You'll regret it else. So, as usual, if you're interested in the Atari Lynx and want to see some of the games, I have found some videos here for your perusal. So I'll leave these up for 10 seconds after I disappear, and uh, click, on the, like, click on the videos here, and uh, enjoy, and uh, go get yourself one. Do yourself a favour, go get one. They're really good. Thank you very much.